So today I'm going to present our research on scalable and automatic malware clustering based on static features. This is a collaborative work with uh, Sandeep and Kent from Semantic Research Labs and my advisor, Professor Kang Xing from University of Michigan. So as the computer and the internet become increasingly important and integrated into people's daily life and today's business world, they are also facing a wide range of uh, various attacks such as information theft, uh, phishing, spam, and etc. The main vehicle for all these organized cyber crimes are various forms of uh, malware. Basically, malware is short for malicious software, generally referred to any hostile or intrusive software that are designed to infiltrate into the computer systems, steal sensitive information, and uh, take control of the system for illegal use and to gain illegal profit. Driven by this economic incentive, the diversity and the sophistication of malware actually increased uh, significantly. Malware has evolved from simple virus that deletes just deleted file, files to more versatile and highly engineered piece of software that is capable of launch, launching large-scale attack against critical infrastructures. Despite the dramatic increase in the malware complexity, the required knowledge for creating the malware program actually uh, decreased substantially. This is mainly due to the growing popularity of various automatic malware creation toolkit, such as Zeus or SpyEye, Spy Eye, which allow even less skilled attackers to automatically customize their own malicious code, leading to the massive creation of malware program. In addition, the malware uh, polymorphism and obfuscation continue to drive up the number of malware variants. Because creating a new malware from scratch is difficult and time-consuming, so most malware authors simply use a more cost-effective approach, that is to take the existing malware and slightly alter them to evade antivirus detection. The existence of automatic tools to perform such mutation also makes this process really easy and also leads to the explosive increase in the number of malware variants seen in the field. So according to a recent report, the number of new malware, sample, malware variants seen in 2012 reaches about 2.5 million. This is equivalent to about more than 7,000 uh, new variants seen every day. This huge influx of malware program has actually created key challenges for AV company. That is, how can they process this number of malware and deploy the mitigation technique to protect their end users? So AV companies usually receive thousands of or even tens of thousands of uh, malware samples from various collection channels. These samples has to be processed and analyzed by the uh, malware analyst and in order to create a signatures to be distributed to the end users. However, this overwhelming number of new samples coming up actually put severe strains on the limited resources in AV company, making them less responsive to the new threats. According to, a recent, uh, according to previous research, the average time window between the malware release to detection by the AV software is about 54 days, leaving a very dangerous window for malware to propagate and cause damage. Therefore, automatic malware analysis is, is crucial uh, to keep up with the development of malware program. So in this work, we present and de we developed MutantX as basically a automatic and a scalable system to perform malware clustering. The motivation of uh, MutantX is basically the common, based on the common observation that the vast majority of the sample, new malware samples are simply the variation of a small, relatively small number of families, and only, usually only a minor, small, slight change has been made across variants. For example, according to the GData malware report, let's say uh, in t the second half of 2012, for example, there are more than 1.2 million new malware variants, but there are only less than 2,500 uh, 2, new families. So be because of this great similarity shared by the malware variants, a efficient way to cluster similar malware uh, variants into families provides several benefits. First, it helps prioritize the limited resources and allow the, the malware analyst to focus on more representative and novel malware samples instead of rather than wasting their time analyzing something that have already been analyzed before. Um, <clears throat> in addition, with the malware clusters, the, um, the label for the new incoming samples can be determined by their association with, with the existing family 
And last but not least, previous detection and mitigation strategy, strategies can be generalized to new variants if they belong to the family, existing family that has been analyzed before. So, therefore, the goal of Milton X is basically takes a set of malware, pre-process it, and extract the static features in terms of code, machine code instructions, and efficiently group them into clusters. Uh, there are three main challenges that has to be addressed in order to achieve such a goal. The first is that most malware actually employ various observation and packing technique to evade uh, malware detection. So the first challenge is how can we efficiently extract the features that are inherent to the original malware program? And second, what is the efficient representation of those features that allow that facilitate the similarity comparison between the malware variants. And finally, how can we scale up the clustering algorithm so that it can keep up with the, the, malware, uh, the growing number of malware program? So in the rest of this talk, I will focus on explaining the techniques uh, developed in Milton X to address all of these challenges. So the first step of Milton X is pre-processing. It actually focuses on, uh, focus on handling the runtime packing problem. Runtime packing is arguably the most uh, popular technique used by the malware authors to evade detection. Uh, it has been estimated that over 80% of the malware samples are packed. A typical packer works uh, as follows. So it takes original executable binaries and either compress or encrypt it into like random looking data and it creates a new uh, binary executable containing this packed data and followed by the unpacker code. The entry point of this new binary is altered to pointing to the unpacker code such that when this packed binary is executed, the unpacker code will first run and decompress or decrypt the original binary into the memory and then jump to the original malicious code for execution. In this way, packing allows the malware, malware program to hide their malicious code as, as innocent looking data while keep their original functionality intact. So <clears throat> even though there exist specialized unpacking tools, but they often only target at one or a few packers. And also they usually have to perform a lot of expensive processing such as reconstruct the PE headers, reconstruct import table, fixing pointers in order to make the unpacked program executable. However, in, in terms of Milton X, we don't have to guarantee such executability as long as the malicious code of the original program can be inspected and feature, select, feature extracted. So basically in Milton X, we exploit this advantage and uh, modified a generic unpacking algorithm to meet the particular need for efficient malware clustering. So the basic idea is to exploit this inherent property of unpacking process, that is they have to write the original program into the memory and then execute them. So by continuously monitor the memory access and detect those pages, memory pages that are modified and then executed, we're able to identify the pages potentially contain the malicious instructions and therefore are target for our further analysis. So uh, more specifically, Milton X will load the packed malware into the, into the memory and mark all the memory pages as um, executable but non-writable. This way, when the unpacker code start to writing uh, original code into the memory, a, a write exception will occur. Um, in this, in, when that happened, Milton X will mark the page as dirty and change its permission to writable but not executable and continue execution. So this process goes on and on until when the, uh, when the unpacker code finishes unpacking and start to jump to the newly generated code for execution, because of the lacking execu executable permission, a execution exception will occur, and Milton X just simply uh, intercepts such exception and dump the memory image, which contains the original malware code. And then Milton X will create a new binary, uh, basically adding a uh, dummy PE headers on top of it and change the entry point, pointing to the address where this execution exception occurs. And then Milton X pass this reconstructed binary to disassembler and then disassemble, disassemble it into a sequence of instructions which are used for feature extraction. So given this disassembled uh, sequence of instructions, the next challenge facing, challenge facing 
Milton X is how can we convert it into a format that are suitable for similarity comparison between the malware variants. So previous work has used the mnemonic sequences like move, push, pop to represent each instructions. In Milton X, we take a different approach. We explore the x86 instruction format and use the opcode as a more accurate uh, representation for each for the semantic for the each in instruction. This is because we found sometimes the mnemonics are overly generalized the underlying CPU operation. For example, if you look at the table. All these instructions have the same mnemonics move, but actually their underlying semantics are quite different. For instance, moving a value to debug register, which means some critical debug operation or checking the debug status, which shouldn't be treated the same as just moving a value to some general register. If we just use the mnemonics, we will basically make all these instructions represented by the same feature and leading to the unexpected similarity between different code snippet. So in Milton X, we choose to use this opcode as a more accurate characterization for the instruction semantic. So given this uh, opcode sequence, Milton X basically applied the standard n-gram analysis on the opcode sequence to convert, to embed these features into a fixed length feature vector, where each element of this feature vector is basically the number of occurrence of a particular uh, n-gram such that the distance or the similarity between malware program can be measured as a distance in a, uh, in a feature vector space. So with this feature vector so that the, uh, we can apply the clustering algorithm on the feature vector to group similar malware. However, the main bottleneck in, in malware clustering are the, are the similarity comparison. So previous like classic clustering algorithms such as um, K-min or hierarchical clustering usually incurs a n-square complexity, which does not scale well for a large number of malware samples. So in Milton X, we apply two techniques to scale up the, proce uh, the clustering process. The first is a hashing kernel method, which uh, developed in machine learning community, uh, which are used to reduce the high dimensional feature vector into the lower dimensional feature space, saving both storage and computation overhead with only a small penalty on the, on the accuracy. So the basic idea is pretty simple. We just use the hash of the n-gram as the as an index into the lower dimensional feature vector. In case of a hash collision, we basically add the feature count in the original feature vector to be the new the, the count for the new features. It has been approved that as long as the uh, hash function we use is uniform, the penalty incurred by the dimension reduction grows only logarithmatically uh, as the number of input data. So the second technique used by Milton X to scale up the process, uh, clustering process is to use a prototype-based clustering algorithm. This is a, a, a type of unstructured and model-free algorithm for clustering and pattern matching. Despite its simplicity, prototype-based algorithm is shown empirically to work really well for real real-world data. So the algorithm basically first select a subset of prototypes, which are such that all the data all the input data are within certain distance. The, basically, the distance between all the da input data points to their nearest prototype is smaller than some threshold, the Pmax. In other words, all the data points are within certain radius or neighborhood of some prototype. So we can view the prototype as a representative data sample of a group of similar data points. So the process for selecting these um, prototypes, the time complexity is O n times k. K is the number of prototype and N is the number of samples. And the second step of the clustering algorithm is basically just cluster the prototype. It recursively merge the nearby prototype until the distance between any clusters is larger than some threshold, the minimum D. Um, so the benefit of this algorithm, and then 
all, and then after we form the cluster for the prototype, all the data points that are associated with the prototype will be put into the same cluster as their respective prototypes. The main benefit of this algorithm is because it only operates on the prototypes, and the number of prototypes is usually in the same order as the malware families, which is much smaller, as we've seen before, than the input data point. So the overall complexity of this algorithm is close to linear in terms of the uh, input malware sample, which is n. So it's uh, much faster than the traditional n squared complexity for, of the classic clustering algorithm. So, so now we evaluate the mutant X using two data sets. The first is a reference data set containing about 5,000 malware samples whose labels are derived from, uh, by the, the security experts in AV company, so it's more reliable. And we also have uh, collected a large data set containing over 130,000 samples from an online malware archive. And we obtain their label by using AV scanner to scan, in, scan through them. So their label is relatively unreliable. In, in the rest of the experiment, we mostly use the reference data set to, ev uh, to evaluate and fine tune the parameter for mutant X because of its reliable data uh, labels. And we use a large data set to test its scalability. So first, we measure the clustering accuracy in terms of how well the resulting cluster agree with the, the original labels, and also the running time of the mutant X. And we vary two parameters in the clustering algorithm, basically Pmax and the mean D, and plot the results in these two figures. As we can see, with proper selection of parameters, the mutant X is able to cluster, uh, correctly cluster 80% of the reference data set within about 20 seconds. And we also observe, further investigate, we also see that Pmax seems to have greater influence on the running time. This is because a smaller Pmax, remember Pmax is basically the, the threshold for the distance between the prototype and every nearby uh, data point. So if we have a smaller Pmax, which means each prototype can only cover a smaller region, so, in, so forcing the algorithm to find more prototypes in order to cover the overall data set. This way, uh, therefore, incurs a longer computation time for both clustering and prototype selection. On the other hand, mean D has a greater influence on the accuracy. This is because uh, a smaller mean D will, will stop the merging process earlier, so it's avoiding merging the unrelated cluster into bigger cluster. However, the downside of that is it tend to, to have result in suboptimal cluster because it will break the big family into a bunch of small families. So in, empirically, we found uh, Pmax and P Mindy to be 0.4 and 0.3 to be strike a good balance between the accuracy and the running time. We also compare mutant X with existing clustering method like hierarchical clustering and k-mean cluster, and we found it uh, usually takes about half or a third of of the running time, so with comparable accuracy. And next, we, we evaluate the impact of hash size on, on using, hash size, uh, hash, using hashing to reduce the dimensionality. So the main concern of using hashing is, is the possible uh, information loss because we compress the high dimensional features into lower dimensional space. So to evaluate its impact, we, we run mutant X with different hash size and compare the results with the baseline case where no hash is used. So from this figure, we can see, as we expected, as, uh, with the increase in the hash size, the accuracy also increase. Actually, when the hash size is uh, larger than 12 bit, which means there are two to the 12 hash beams, the, the, the collision probability seems to be negligible, and the accuracy is almost the same as the, as the precision, as the accuracy when there is no hash is used. So from, in this regard, it seems like the, uh, a larger hash size is more preferable. However, if we look at the bottom two figures where it measures the hash size versus the running time and uh, the peak memory usage, we found a small hash size actually is very effective in reducing the, the uh, computation overhead and the storage overhead. So overall, we found using 12 hash bit is, seems to strike a balance because it's reduced the memory usage and uh, running time by 80% while keep the accuracy almost intact, almost the same as no hash is used. And also from this figure, this figure also shows that the hashing trick will become more and more important 
as the number of malware grows because otherwise without it, the memory usage will quickly become prohibitively high for the large uh, number of malware samples. So in this slide, we show the scalability of Milton X. So we basically run the, uh, the Milton X on a larger data set, which contains over 130,000 samples. And we use the parameter we use is 12-bit hash and all this very parameter showing these figures. And we see that um, Milton X is actually pretty efficient. It successfully cluster this whole large data set within two hours and resulting in a reasonably good accuracy. So, so far, we have evaluated Milton X only using the data which we know, using the malware data with known family labels. So, a more realistic or practical setting for Milton X is to try to predict the, the family label for the new incoming malware based on their association with the existing clusters. So, in order to simulate such scenario, we obtain the creation time for the malware samples from their image file header the timestamp in their image file header. This is a standard header uh, included in every Windows executable, and the timestamp is set by the compiler during the compilation time. And this uh, bottom figure basically showing the number of malware created in each month of 2008, and we use them to simulate the case I mentioned before. The case basically tried to predict the label for the new incoming sample, which hasn't been seen before. So specifically, we divide the, the malware data into two sets, training data, training data set and testing data set. And specifically, we use uh, each month between July and December as our test set. And we choose our training set um, under three scenarios. The first scenario, we use every month from January to one month uh, before the test month as our training data. So basically we accumulate all the histories uh, for the up-to-date malware information. And the second data set, we only use the most recent history, basically six months prior to the testing month as our training data. And the third scenario is a baseline comparison. We only use the first six months from January to June as our training data, regardless of the test month. So we Given the training and the testing data, we apply Milton X on the training set and generate the clusters, uh, generate malware clusters, and then we predict the family labels for the, for the new malware in the test set based on their association with the closest cluster. And then we compare this predicted label with their original label, and we plot the accuracy, the percentage of successfully predict, accurately predict the label in this graph. So the first thing we notice that is malware definitely keep evolving. So if you look at the bottom green, fig, green line, where we only we keep using the first six months as a, as a training data, we see the accuracy drop from like uh, more than uh, accuracy drop from higher than 0.7 in July to lower than 0.4 in December because the malware information just gets out of date. And in contrast, if we keep all the history which is the case in the, in the red line. So because of, thanks to this up-to-date malware information, we're able to keep the prediction accuracy uh, around 0.7 to 0.8. However, in reality, the, the resource limitation dictates that we probably wouldn't be able to accumulate all history indefinitely. So a more, uh, more practical strategy is to use the most recent history to train the, the Milton X and, and predict the label. So this is a case where we, uh, in the blue line, as we can see here, if we only use the most recent six months data to do the prediction, the accuracy just slightly drop below, uh, below the when we use the whole history. So this basically demonstrates the strong temporal correlation among malware samples and also the potential benefit of using Milton X to predict the malware label. So as a conclusion, we developed a system called Milton X, which is an automatic and scalable malware clustering framework based on aesthetic features. We use opcode sequence to, uh, to achieve a better semantic representation, and we use ngram analysis to allow applying the clustering algorithm in a feature vectors, in a feature space. And we address the scalability challenges using two methods. One is using hash kernel to reduce the feature dimensionality, and we use prototype-based algorithm to increase the clustering speed. We evaluate the Milton X on a large number of real-world malware samples and 
and demonstrate its effectiveness and efficiency. So that concludes my talk. Thank you for listening. I'll be happy to take questions. I'm William from UEC Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I have a question about uh, unpacking. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if Mutant X works well even when uh, malware uses a very sophistic sophisticated packing technique that, uh, that encrypts again the decrypted pages after the execution of the pages? Yes, uh. that's actually a very good question. Uh. In paper, I just present a very basic generic unpacking algorithm. Actually, in the paper, we have developed a heuristic to identify whether there are you know, additional layer of packing. So they may pack the program multiple mm -hmm. times, or they even use incremental packing. So yeah. they unpack part of the program and continue execution and, and unpack the other part. So we do have uh, some heuristic to handle that case. But we agree. Actually, we have a slide, a backup slide showing, let's see, showing, uh, although it's quite effective, but it's still, you know, failed on some cases, some more sophisticated uh, unpacker like the one on the bottom, which what this packer does is basically it first unpack a binary into the disk and then create a process of that new binary. So if we only dump the memory of the, you know, the, the main process, we wouldn't be able to see its content. But I mean, this is always the arm race between attacker and the defender, but yes. Thanks. Hey, um, in the slide that you had that showed the evaluation, um, mm -hmm. the accuracy, mm -hmm. and there was actually a drop from um, month seven to month eight. Yeah. Did you do you have an intuition of why that would happen? Uh, I think. Um, yeah, actually, we haven't. I don't think I. Uh, without anything, investigate that. But I would expect maybe there are some new type of malware or new malware family showing up, so we don't have any history for that. That's why there is a drop. And after we include the month eight into our data set, we're able to keep up with the, the overall, uh, keep up with the development of new malware samples. And also I noticed that the accuracy is between 0.7 and 0.8. Mm -hmm. um, is that good enough? Um, we think it's actually doing, it, it really depends on the data set. We, we believe it's, it's definitely better. And also, actually, we, we, uh, a, a improvement for that is we can look at the distance between the, the, the new samples to the existing cluster. So if they're too far away, we probably know it's a new string of malware samples and we can separ uh, like kind of separate and anal analyze them to create a new family, yes. One quick question. Mm -hmm. When you do the dimension reduction um, through hashing, mm -hmm. does the hashing tend to sort of uh, eliminate the proximity of data? Um, you know, when you do, because you care about um, things that are near each other in values, mm -hmm. when you do hashing, don't you lose that? Um, no, actually, as I mentioned, there are a formal proof in the paper which invented that, the hashing. They proved that the distance are preserved with only a small disturb. On the, on the distance values. Um, I have a question again about this slide. Uh, how do you know that, how do you know the ground truth about the family label? I mean, to, to basically tr train your system over mm -hmm. time, someone needs to tell you, okay, this label was correctly assigned or not. Right, we, so we have to rely on some, you know, either the security experts uh, experts' perspective, but I agree with you. Actually, we found a lot of problem for the label. We found even the, there are large variation of the of the pro, of the variants within the same family. They are actually quite different, but uh, for some reason they are being clustered into the same family. And, and just follow up. Mm -hmm. Does that brings us back again to f 54 days to actually come up with the exact label for the for the particular prototype? No, no. That that is just average. I mean, there are some quick. Uh, like more severe malware, they probably respond faster, but because of there are so many malware programs, they wouldn't be able to allocate resource for every one of them. So some of them will remain undetected for that, 
that time. Actually, that report also say about 15% 15, 15 of all the malware samples are remain undetected for as long as 180 days. So that's actually a very, very serious problem. Thank you. When you build the signature of, of the code you're analyzing by using opcodes, mm -hmm. you do not consider for call instructions what system calls they're making. Wouldn't that, isn't that representative of what the program is trying to do? Yes, that, the one you mentioned is actually belong to dynamic analysis. There are, there are a lot of dynamic analysis system basically capture the system calls invoked by the malware program. That's actually, I think these two approach are, are very complementary to each other. So they have their pros and cons. Actually, our current work is how we integrate these two to help them you know, strength, uh, combine their strengths but mitigate their limitations. So I think that's a very good question. Okay, thank you.